Hi everyone, I am Anaike Jasmine Laplana from BSIT Tom 11 and today we are going to discuss about bar graph. But first, let's hear its definition. Bar graph is a graph that shows complete data with rectangular bars. And the heights of bars are proportional to the values that they represent. Bar graphs are also known as bar charts. And it is a pictorial representation of group data. Bar graphs are mainly classified into two types, vertical bar graph and horizontal bar graph. Bar graphs are excellent to represent data because it gives a visual display for comparing quantities in different categories. Now that we know the definition, let's take a look at the examples on how to plot a vertical bar graph. Construct a bar graph using the table, student's favorite sport. So remember, when plotting a vertical bar graph, we must indicate the frequency on the left side, or y-axis, and the categories in the x-axis. For the frequency, we have the number of students. For the categories, we have football, basketball, volleyball, badminton, and swimming. Then it's time to draw the bars. Remember, the length or height of the bar needs to be exact to what value it represents in the table. For football, we have 30. Basketball, we have 25. Volleyball, we have 40. Badminton, we have 50 students. Lastly, swimming, we have 15 students. Don't forget to put the title student's favorite sport. That is how to plot a vertical bar graph. Using the previous example, what if we are plotting a double bar graph, wherein we are comparing two sets of data in the same graph. As we can see, in our table, we have two more data. And the same goes for each category. To be clear, Below the table, I have here a color guide. Color yellow for high school and color blue for college. Let's draw the bars. In football, out of 30 students, there are 10 high school students and 20 college students. For basketball, we have 8 high school students and 17 college students. For volleyball, we have 25 high school and 15 college. For badminton, we have 15 high school students and 35 college students. Lastly, swimming, we have 5 high school students and 10 college students. And that's how we plot a double bar graph for students' favorite sport. As we said earlier, bar graphs can be also represented horizontally. And this is our example. The difference is yung categories natin will be on the y-axis and yung frequency will be in the x-axis. So this graph is entitled as Students Preferred Activity During Summer Camp. Sa left side, makikita natin yung activities during summer camp. We have arts and crafts. Games, Dance, and Adventure. Sa x-axis naman ay yung number of students. Using this graph, we can answer the following questions. Which is the most preferred activity of the students during summer camp? As we can see on the graph, color pink na bar yung pinakamarami which is yung games. Number two, how many students like arts and crafts? So, yung bar ng arts and crafts is nag-stop between 80 and 100. So, we can conclude na to get the frequency, kailangan natin malaman yung midpoint nilang dalawa, which is number 90. Number three, what are the activities the students can do during the summer camp? So, state lang natin lahat ng categories na meron sa graph, which are arts and crafts, games, dance, and adventure. 
How many students like adventure? So kanina, we already know the value between 80 and 100, which is 90. Ngayon naman, is nasa gitna siya ng 90 and 100, yung adventure. So, kunin natin ulit yung midpoint nilang dalawa. Another way to get the midpoint is to add 90 and 100. 90 plus 100, and then divide sa 2. So, we have the answer, 95. Number 5, which is the least preferred activity during summer camp? Blue color na bar ang pinakakaunti, which is yung dance. The total number of students who joined the summer camp. To get the total, add ng latin lahat yung frequencies ng bawat category. So, 90 plus 120 plus 80 plus 95 is equals to 385. So, there are 385 students who joined the summer camp. For our last example, we have the graph of foreign students in diversity college. We have students from Korea, France, Australia, India, and England. Then, sa left side, a number of students from the different countries I have mentioned. Let's proceed to the guide questions. From which country has the most number of foreign students in diversity college? As we can see, blue colored bar yung pinakamataas and that is Australia. Number two, how many foreign students came from Korea? As we can see sa graph, nasa midpoint siya ng 200 and 240. To get the frequency, kagaya ng ginawa natin kanina, we need to get the midpoint, and that is 220. Number 3. How many foreign students came from France? So we already know the midpoint of 200 and 240, which is 220. Ngayon, is yung midpoint naman between 200 and 220. To get the value, Add 200 and 220, divide by 2, to get the answer, 210. So, there are 210 students that came from France. Number 4, which country has the second least number of foreign students in diversity college? Sa graph, makikita natin na India ang pinakamababa. Then, ang sumunod sa kanya is, yung color green is France. So, our answer will be France. How many foreign students came from England? We have 240. Number 6. From which country has the least number of foreign students in diversity college? Makikita naman natin, color pink na bar, which indicates India. Number 7. What is the average number of foreign students in diversity college? Ang gagawin natin to get the average is i-add lang natin lahat ng frequency, then divide kung ilan ng kanyang categories. So, we have 220 plus 210 plus 280 plus 120 plus 240 Divide by 5, kasi we have 5 categories, equals to 214. The average number of foreign students in diversity college is 214. And that's it for today's video lesson. Once again, I am Alaika Jasmine Laplana from the SIT Tom 11. Thank you guys for watching.